So good morning, thank you for joining us. Um, uh, just a little bit of background about these interviews really. So Mesothelioma UK in response to the COVID pandemic has been conducting a series of interviews really just to um, help people and, and give people the opportunity to connect um, with members of the mesothelioma community that they might not otherwise have been able to. Um, mostly to just see if we can do anything to smooth, um, smooth their experience. Um, and it's been predominantly healthcare, but this morning we're going to be talking to three members of the mesothelioma community from the legal profession and um, they're all members of the Mesothelioma UK legal panel. And um, so I would like to introduce them and we'll start with ladies first. So <laughs> Helen, please, um, would you be kind enough to introduce yourself? Hi, thank you, Liz. I'm so pleased to be able to, to uh, appear on this uh, panel session. I'm um, Helen Childs. I'm lucky enough to work representing solely asbestos related claimants and I am just love what I do. I work for Roy Twithy King. Um, we've got a specialist team of lawyers and they equally feel as dedicated and, and that it's as, as much a vocation as I do. So we consider ourselves very fortunate. Thank you, Helen. Adrian, welcome and thank you. Thank you very much, Liz. It's a great honour to be invited to take part in this session today. So, so like Helen, um, it's an absolute uh, privilege to represent uh, mesothelioma sufferers and their families and uh, I've uh, had that uh, sad privilege for 30 years now so I head up uh, Owen Mitchell's asbestos disease team um, and I'm also a, a trustee of the June Hancock mesothelioma research fund but um, thank you for, for inviting me to, to join today. Thank you Adrian and uh, Dan thank you. Hi, uh, thanks Liz. Um, so I'm Dan Easton, I'm a partner at a firm called Lee Day um, and sort of like Helen and Adrian I've specialised in asbestos cases particularly mesothelioma for, for many years now um, and yeah just absolutely delighted to be here and to see what help and advice we can offer. Okay well thank you um, all of you and um, just to explain a little bit so Mesothelioma UK has this year um, established for the first time a legal panel and there are eight firms on the panel and you represent three of those firms and um, I'll signpost people to that legal panel later. Um, but I also um, just wanted to say this interview as I say is more about the Covid pandemic um, and you know if people find it useful and um, actually having the opportunity to hear some of our legal colleagues um, chat about um, civil claims and so on then it might be something that we might like to do in the future so if people do have any ideas of questions that they'd like to put to members of the legal professional then I'd suggest they make a little note as we go as they listen and we can perhaps pick up on them later if they let us know so we'll kick off I think and Dan I'd just like to ask you that you know all of us have had to really adapt our, the way that we work um, and I just wondered as a, as a firm what measures have Lee Day had to put in place to enable your team to continue to, to work as, as near to normal as possible? What sort of things have you had to do to adapt? Yeah, well, it's, I mean, it's sort of completely unprecedented. You know, none of us have ever had to deal with anything like this. So I'm now at home in the spare bedroom um, and we've been in lockdown for three and a half, coming up to four months now. Um, I mean, to start with, it was a matter of getting everyone organised. So, you know, making sure they were comfortable at home able to do their work and that meant sort of ferrying chairs around London getting people screens and phones and, and everything they need to do their work and really trying to make sure that we could sort of replicate the office when people are working from home so that they can do the same job that they were doing before um, and, and I think we've managed to achieve that sort of try to keep things going as business as usual as best we can um, and then I think sort of ongoing because it, it's it's taken so much to adjust to doing this. From my point of view, it's um, it's making sure that all of the team are supported. And you know, when we're in the office, you can pop next door, you can speak to somebody if you've got a a problem. Um, but you can't, or you don't feel sort of quite like doing that when you're at home. So we have weekly Zoom meetings like this. I chat to all my colleagues, make sure they're okay, that they know what they're doing. Um, 
and then sort of speaking to them, you know, at least a couple of times a week, talking through any issues they might have and, and making sure that they've got that support. And, and really, from a, from a firm point of view, that's making sure that we continue the, the quality of service that people need, because these, these can be difficult cases and people need to be supported. They, they need to be able to rely on their lawyers and, um, and we need to be here to make sure we can do that. Yeah, I'm glad you said about that because I've always been a great believer in healthcare. I've been, um, you know, a ward manager and I've led teams in the NHS for a long time. And I've always really felt that it's really important to be a compassionate manager mm. because if you look after your team, then they will look after your, you know, the, the people who use your service, whether that's healthcare or legal professionals. So it's nice that you do have that, you know, that week, in, weekly interaction to and yeah. look after the team and every member of the team is important irrespective of uh, of what they do so, mm. so in, in terms of um people who have um uh, engaged with you know either one of your three companies and um that for people who've started their legal process before um covid really hit us what has the um what's the impact been to their claim helen i, I wonder if you could talk about that about you know people who'd started their uh, civil claim or had had engaged with you as a company prior to the lockdown how has it impacted um, on their on, on the on the whole process but in in some ways nothing has changed the court that deals with these claims in London has always been very um, easy to contact by email it's always dealt with the majority of its hearings by telephone so that hasn't changed what has changed is that they are now dealing with the final hearings to assess the amount of compensation payable or to assess whether or not any compensation should be payable they're dealing with those by video link um, as far as the claims themselves are concerned I would like to think it's, it's it's very difficult not to be able to actually physically see the clients at the moment, although we are now starting to see our clients um, again face to face. But we've dealt with um, with uh, keeping in touch with them by email, by phone and by um, face FaceTime and Zoom meetings. So I don't I, I would hope that none of the clients are feeling disadvantaged because we're now all working from home. We've had some lovely reviews for claims that have been concluded throughout this period, saying how well people felt they were being looked after. So I'm hoping that that we are um, we are still as accessible and approachable and helpful as we ever were. Um, in some ways, the um, the COVID uh, virus has it's an advantage in some ways because some of the insurance companies are really not geared up to work remotely at all. So what I've done in those, in, with those cases is I, where I can see it's not getting anywhere, I've just issued proceedings and then it's up to the court to put in place a timetable and the, and the insurers um, are sometimes not interacting with us at all. So, so some of the claims are proceeding even more quickly than they were before because the court is now deciding things. And instead of giving the defendants a little bit of leeway and a little bit of time to do this, that or the other, if they're clearly not able to engage, we're just cracking on with things. So I would hope that really nothing's changed, even though, like everybody else, for us, the whole world has changed. It sounds like some people that probably dragged their feet before might have had to step up a little bit, probably because the courts are setting the day. Yes, yes, yeah. And the courts are being, um, all of the masters are hearing, and that's the name that we have for the judges in the courts. They're all hearing everything from home. And I really, you really wouldn't notice a difference. Uh, we've always lodged all our documents remotely. It really, it really has made no difference apart from the final hearing. I guess it's a bit like healthcare, you know, that we've had to find new ways of working and been be a bit inventive. And I'm really hoping and I'm absolutely certain that there will be some of those new ways of working that we will continue with because it's actually um, enhanced a service rather than, you know, inhibited it. Um, but it's interesting what you say about um, seeing people face to face, some of the Mesa UK nurses. Um, we've had some really emotional exchanges of experiences where, um, nurses have been called to admissions because one of their patients has been admitted and um, the relief for the patient and the nurse in actually being able to see somebody that they've cared for for months or you know sometimes even longer and um, and for the patient seeing a familiar face and um, and you know we've all 
got quite emotional saying we, it's the times like that you think you realize how much you actually miss seeing people yes. mm. people touching them holding a hand because mm. it's, that's our nature we are human beings and that kind of interaction is uh, so it's nice that you've started to see people because um as as well as it sounds like you've adapted it's uh, nothing quite like face to face really mm -hmm. Um, and I'm sure you'll be looking at what you can carry on, um, you know, some of these working practices. So with people who um, hadn't engaged with a law firm prior to COVID, um, I, I'm just wondering if, you know, how, how has that impacted new claims or people newly diagnosed over the last few months? Um, you know, I know in, in, in healthcare, in, in, in cancer services, in some areas, our referral rate went down by 80%. And we're currently not not quite up to 70 percent so we've still got a 30 percent decrease and i just wondered um you know i hope people haven't put off i hope we've been able to reassure people that our legal colleagues are there for them and able to carry on working but i'm just wondering you know how what was changed for new clients um adrian you know perhaps you could explain well Liz, as you say you know the cancer services have haven't been working uh, as they would normally do and that's that's starting to change and obviously i think for a time part of it was uh, people were afraid maybe to go to, to a hospital um they might have been worried themselves even though they were experiencing symptoms that they may catch the virus in some way so um that's we've seen i suppose fewer people in that in that way but uh, under normal circumstances we would uh, see people at home usually um, but uh, the majority of uh, our clients majority of people are, have been shielded in this this time so that's not been possible so we've um, been able to speak to people by phone or as, as Helen said earlier um, Skype or Zoom or uh, Microsoft Teams if that's uh, better for them so we've just uh, been able to engage with people in any way that they that they would prefer really um, but it's obviously very different normally you, you would see people at home and and that's far better to see people face to face that's starting to to change but uh, so it's certainly quite uh, difficult for people initially um, but um, as always you know with with, with uh, we check in with our clients on a regular basis to make sure they're okay and in fact there's been probably greater interaction during this period in that way uh, less because obviously we're not sending so many letters <laughs> um so it's easier to speak to people really and it's, it's better that way so uh, um and we we have client liaison managers as well so if people have additional needs or, or support they they require then um my, our client liaison uh, colleagues have been very uh, good in, in this period and, and, and helped with uh, well-being as well so um, that's been brilliant. So it sounds really positive, doesn't it? So greater interaction with people, and Helen, you talked about good reviews, and um, so I, you know, it's you, what we can see is there are some positive, you know, every cloud and all that. Um, I just wondered what can people do themselves? So people have either started a civil claim pre-lockdown or they started during. Lockdown. What can they do to smooth the path, Dan? What what would you, you know, if you gave wanted to give people a piece of advice, what would you say about? what people can do themselves, so either the person with MISO or their family and carers, what can they do to help smooth that uh, legal process? Yeah, well, um, I mean, I think much the same as Helen and Adrian have said, a lot of it's down to us and not the, not the clients. They, they really you know, shouldn't be experiencing any massive change. It, it's really up to us to make sure that their claims are going smoothly and we're all you know, endeavouring to do that as best we can. Um, in terms of you know advice for our clients, I think you know number one, don't be afraid to ask questions. If you've got any concerns or queries, or you're worried that COVID might impact on your case, um, you know pick up your phone and speak to your lawyer and ask them, and, and don't be afraid to to put these questions to people. Um, the, from my point of view, and, and much as what Adrian has said, the, the huge benefit has been the technology. And, and it's funny because we probably had it there, you know, using video calls, but we've not used it. Um, and, and it can be a bit intimidating. You know, people are worried that a call isn't going to work or you 
you call and then your your video isn't working or your sound isn't working and and you know really don't worry you know we're learning as well and it's not a big problem you know nobody really minds if your picture doesn't come up immediately but you know for us using that to to have these face-to-face -face meetings that otherwise I wouldn't have seen people for two or three months is really vital so so don't be afraid to give it a try um, don't worry if it doesn't work um, and ask a family member if you've got a son or a brother who can help you out then ask them um, you know I've, I've had lots of family and friends who've been able to to make things go a bit more smoothly for people and it's been fantastic to do that gosh i do that all the time i ring one of the kids and say how do i do this or how do i do that so you know it gets really and and for people who um have already have got a claim going through and have been a bit frustrated by the lack of progress because we know that that happens sometimes and um helen have you got any advice for for them um you know what what would you suggest if someone's a bit frustrated with the lack of communication from their law firm or what they think is a lack of progress because sometimes it may be unavoidable but it might be a communication thing so just what kind of advice would you give to in that situation well i'd echo what dan said really which is to ask your lawyer don't be intimidated they're there to serve you and it's not the other way around um, so ask your lawyer first of all there are a couple of instances where things have been unavoidably delayed in in mesothelioma claims so we're finding it a bit more difficult to get hold of some of the medical records whereas others are coming through as normal. It's taking a little bit longer to get people's employment histories through. And as I said earlier, some of the insurers just aren't geared up to deal with, the, with things remotely, but none of those in themselves are things to cause um, a real lack of progress. They're, none of them are things that are absolutely crucial to get on with progressing the rest of the claim. So if you're being told that delays are due to um, the COVID situation, I'm, um, I would query that with the with the law firm and if you're really unhappy they should have a complaints process for you to go through. Um, I really don't think it's any reason for delay in itself. Any of the things that are missing you can progress without them and if anyone's really unhappy and they really feel that they're not getting answers and I'm sure that Adrian and Dan have like myself both taken all, ta all taken over cases from other firms where it, they were languishing um, then they shouldn't be afraid to seek a second opinion and to make sure that they've got a specialist fight in their corner really because it would be so easy to be to be bamboozled by the lack of progress um, if you weren't if you weren't really specialist in dealing with this sort of claim i wouldn't you wouldn't want me doing your conveyancing i promise you and i wouldn't want somebody who does conveyancing most of the time doing a mesothelioma claim either so Really, just don't be afraid. Ask questions. You you should be in the driving seat. Yeah, thank you for that. Sometimes I think just hearing that from somebody um, like one of you three can empower people to actually have the, the, the guts to pick up the phone and to ask the questions. And and if anyone is looking for a law firm for a second opinion, I would urge them to look at our, our legal panel because there's eight companies there that they could turn to. Um, Adrian, we've heard that the courts have managed to adapt to working virtually, and that shouldn't have delayed um situation at all for anybody but people you know i i i work with <coughs> people with mesothelioma um all the time and and so often you know when i start to talk to people about the potential to pursue a civil claim they get a bit anxious about it and i'm yeah. worried that people themselves may have used the whole covid situation as another reason not to pick up the phone to a law firm and I, I, you know, I, w w what I hope is they can see what kind of easygoing people you are. That, you know, you're not scary, you know, lawyers sitting in, a, in an ivory tower somewhere. You're very reasonable, approachable people who will do your utmost to help people. And I just wonder what advice would you give to people who, who, are, who, are, who are struggling just to make that step to pick up the phone? I just want to completely understand this, why people would be very anxious uh, about the thought of uh, consulting a solicitor. It's, it's very different. I know Helen mentioned convincing uh, uh, earlier that, uh, you know, most people's experience of dealing with a solicitor is, is probably buying or selling a house maybe. But, uh, and this is a, obviously at a very, very difficult time. Um, the thought of contacting a lawyer may seem very uh, 
uh, worrying and, and strange. And also, I think, fear of uh, um, going to court, for example. You know, we talk about court proceedings, but um, I completely understand people's worry about that. But in reality, um, the majority of cases are settled without, uh, with, you know, we don't go anywhere near a court in a lot of cases. So, and, and actually going to, to trial is, is, is a rare event. So um, throughout the whole legal process, we're there to support clients every step of the way. So we try and take all that additional stress away. You know, people have enough to worry about in terms of the diagnosis and having treatment and, and all sorts of other worries, but we try and just support everyone through this process. And we, as Helen mentioned earlier, we've got uh, specialist courts uh, in, in London, uh, the, the specialist judges who are very good at dealing with mesothelioma cases. They're dealt with in a uh, speedy way and in a compassionate way. And uh, so the vast majority of cases uh, are settled without uh, going to court. Um, so that should, I hope, uh, alleviate people's worry in that sense. And also they shouldn't uh, fear about uh, costs either because uh, people should be able to enter into a, a funding agreement which means that they don't have any costs to pay or no financial risk to themselves that's, I know that's a real worry for a lot of people so I uh, just want to convey that message actually it's, it's not a process that will uh, involve you with financial risk or, or, or costs so uh, um, but you know, we'll, we'll help people uh, in, in every way we possibly can. I think, um, I think you know, like you said, it, often when people are first diagnosed and they're navigating the healthcare system, sometimes the thought of navigating the legal system as well can be that one thing that just would be the straw that breaks the camel's back and they think, well, I can put that aside, I don't have to deal with it. And what's nice is that we can reassure people that actually the legal um, the, the the legal profession you do so much to lessen the burden and to you know make it as easy as possible for them um, and so you know I'm, I'm glad that you, you you you've shed some light on that and I also just want to reiterate that really the whole COVID situation there is no effect from the COVID situation that should put anybody off um, pursuing um, their their potential civil entitlements. Um, uh, absolutely. Before we wrap up, um, I just want to give each of you the chance in, in, a, in a quick sentence, nice and succinct, <laughs> if you could give one word of advice to somebody who has been diagnosed with mesothelioma or their family member, um, a priority kind of top tip that you, you, you like to share with people, what, what, what would it be? And I'll, I'll do ladies first, if that's okay. Uh, Helen, what would you... Um, what would, if you I'm not sure I, I view it as an advantage. I'm now thinking <laughs> on my feet. Um, I really, I think I would say um, in terms of contact with the lawyer, don't hesitate to get in touch with your lawyer. I always say to my clients that I'm contactable anytime. So they've all got my direct dial, my email. They've got multiple ways of getting in touch. And I always say to them, don't hesitate to get in touch with me. If you're fretting about something at six o'clock on Friday evening, I'd hate to think about you worrying all over the weekend. Just ask and it's probably something I can help you with. So I suppose in a not very succinct one word answer, I would say just ask for help, whether it's from your lawyer, from the healthcare professionals, from support groups, from anybody, don't hesitate to ask for help because everyone will want to do everything they can to assist you. Lovely, thank you. And Adrian, what would, uh, what would your priority bit of advice be? I think uh, well, I echo what, what Helen said there, but but also if if you d don't want to uh, pursue a, a civil claim, which is uh, understandable, it, it's important uh, if you can just to record um, where you may think you have been exposed to asbestos uh, in the past, because you or they may not uh, may for all sorts of reasons not want to pursue a civil claim now you may change your mind at some future date. And it's, it's, it's quite helpful, I think, when you have some time uh, and you can think about uh, times and situations where you're exposed to asbestos previously, maybe to, to, to note that down. Um, 
but you know, I do certainly recommend uh, consulting a specialist solicitor, one of the legal panel firms, to um, to, to at least explore that. You don't. There's no obligation in any way. It's just really uh, the best thing is if we can uh, capture someone's evidence in a statement form uh, 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 as early as possible. That, that 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 that's very helpful. I think. Lovely. Thank you. And Dan, finally, what would your priority bit of advice be? Um, well, I mean, firstly, I'd echo what Adrian said, speak to a specialist. This isn't a time to, to contact your local high street. Um, but I think really the, the thing is, I think people worry they're saying the wrong thing. And, and there is no wrong thing. You know, if you're speaking to your lawyer, just be open, tell them what you remember, you know, sort of any little bit of information that you can think of is helpful. There, there's no wrong answers to questions. You know, don't be afraid of of lawyers we're not we're not nasty people <laughs> but yeah, don't don't be afraid ask questions you know and and, and feel comfortable with it lovely well i i um thank you for that and i think um you know just to sum up i would say covid um you've all adapted covid has not impacted for new clients existing clients and um, the door is open and the services are there um, and their claims can be processed in as probably even more streamlined way, potentially. Um, that's not being, you know, communication is key. Specialist law firm is key. And, um, and, and just seeing that, uh, you know, that you're, you know, you, you're a very compassionate team of, of lawyers. I've had the pleasure of working with many of the lawyers who work in, this field for years and you kind of stick around a bit like the nurses do you know we've all been doing this for some of us 20 years and um you know i just think you know i want people to be able to see um how caring and compassionate the legal professionals are that work in this field and i hope today's shed a bit of light on that and also um explained that covid has not had uh, the negative impact on the legal system um, that people might be thinking it has. So I'd like to say a big thank you to you. Um, as I said, our legal panel information, it's on our website that you can pick up the phone to Miso UK and we'll send you a leaflet. And it's also on the back of our magazine. And if anybody does have any other questions they would like to pose to a legal panel, send them into Miso UK and we will, um, you know, we'll recreate this um, with some of your colleagues and some of the other law firms. Um, and give people the opportunity to pose some questions to an expert because I think it's really helpful. Um, and um, yeah, just like to say a really big thank you again and uh, have a good week. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you, Liz. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. You too. Take care. Keep well. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>